Greetings, this is Christopher Moyer from University of Wisconsin-Stout. Uh, I want to thank you for your interest in my work that was presented at the May 2010 uh, Researching Massage Therapy and Complementary and Integrative Medicine Conference. And uh, without any further delay, I'm going to talk about the presentation entitled Cortisol Reductions in Response to Massage Therapy, a Comprehensive Quantitative Review. Next slide. Um, <clears throat> As uh, the audience at this conference and you will surely know, massage therapy is a large and growing industry. Uh, many people are using massage therapy uh, for a variety of reasons, including uh, in the expectation that it will benefit their health. Next slide. And as you will uh, also undoubtedly know, uh, massage has been shown to be consistently better than control treatments for certain things, including reducing heart rate and blood pressure, reducing anxiety and depression, and also reducing some specific forms of pain. Next slide. Now, there are several theories for how massage therapy might cause these effects, uh, and uh, it is, of course, an open question also whether it causes those effects those effects through one or through uh, several different mechanisms. But note here that uh, Field and her colleagues have been uh, unambiguous in their support for the uh, theory that massage therapy first reduces the stress hormone cortisol and that this reduction is a uh, underlying causal mechanism for these other effects, reductions of heart rate, blood pressure, anxiety, depression, and pain. And uh, this is shown here in some quotes from their studies across a period of about nine years. Next slide. Now, we must point out that uh, the results that uh, I and my colleagues have gotten have not been consistent with this theory. Uh, we have in two quantitative reviews included cortisol as an outcome that we've assessed, and in both cases, whether we were looking at adult recipients or pediatric recipients, we have not found a statistically significant effect for cortisol, even though we have found statistically significant effects for those other clinical outcomes, depression, anxiety, pain, uh, heart rate, and blood pressure. Uh, this leads us to believe that cortisol just cannot be a causal mechanism. Uh, now, why are Field and colleagues getting different results than we are getting, even though we're largely looking at the same set of studies? Well, uh, next slide. It really matters a lot how you analyze the data. Uh, many people who are not researchers would assume that the way to measure the effect of massage therapy on something like cortisol is to take a before treatment measure, which we can picture uh, as a bell curve such as this. We can expect that we'll get a normal distribution if we sample a bunch of people's cortisol levels before massage therapy. And next slide. If we then measure their cortisol levels again, after treatment, whether that's a single session or multiple sessions, depending on the research design, uh, this before and after change, logically to most people, would be massage therapy's effect on cortisol. But researchers know that it's not as simple as this, that if we take a before and after measure such as this, we don't know that the treatment that we administered in between those measurements is the cause of any difference we see. It could be due to treatment, but it also could be due simply to the passage of time. That is, the same change might have happened even if treatment hadn't been done. It could be due to a placebo effect. That is, the person's expectation that the treatment would work, but not directly the, treat, the effect of treatment itself. It could be due to spontaneous healing processes, or it could even be due to a statistical phenomenon known as statistical regression, which is a little too complicated for me to go into here, but if that's a new concept to you, uh, the Wikipedia file on that concept is actually quite good, so an internet search can probably clarify uh, regression to the mean, uh, what that means. Okay, so what do we do about this? Next slide. Well, we do, in fact, start with before treatment measurements, but what we must do is assign some people to get massage and some people to not get massage. Next slide. So that when we're done with our research, we have not one endpoint measurement, but two, at least two. 
That is, we have some people who've gotten massage and some people who have not gotten massage but have undergone the same passage of time and hopefully the same amount of attention and, if possible, have been convinced that maybe they're receiving a treatment even if they're not uh, to control for placebo effect. Now, what we want to look at to best measure the effect of treatment itself is the difference in those two endpoints, pictured here as a purple distribution and a green distribution. If massage therapy does better than a control treatment, then we've got much better confidence that the difference we see is the result of the treatment and not of one of those confounds, time, placebo effect, statistical regression, and so on. So this is at the root of why Field and her colleagues and we are getting different results. Next slide. Uh, actually, one more slide. So we've got our between groups effect pictured here. So under the next slide that uh, reads two approaches to measuring effective MT on cortisol, Touch Research Institute uh, have emphasized very consistently within group effects in their studies. Uh, whereas, and this is despite the fact that they typically conduct between group studies with control groups, but then they inexplicably uh, ignore the control group data. Uh, we have not done this. We, uh, when we look at these effects, always look at the between groups analysis so that we can control for the confounds that the control group is intended to control for. And this is universally recognized by methodologists as the optimal way to proceed in clinical research. So uh, this is the approach that we emphasize in the quantitative review that we're about to show you. All our analyses are between group effects on randomized controlled trials. Next slide. <clears throat> 